great. So that's why you're here. So the uh, best thing I can tell you is stay away from uh, the Facebook group, Everything Eco Diesel. As I think it's like 20 or 30,000 members, and it is an absolute poor information area. Um, people that are there are just providing information that they read on Google or that someone told them uh, without any factual information. Stick to people that actually work on these uh, for a living, which is what we do. Uh, now, it is the only vehicle that is at my shop that I don't own are all eco diesels. Anything that's not eco diesel, I own it. Um, we work on five to fifteen of them a month um, with one employee. So, like, not you know, not a crazy number, uh, but more than any other shop that specializes in them. Um, and then obviously we tune them. So you just bought Equal Diesel and now you're worried about them because you hear they have a ton of issues. Um, issues one, emissions. Uh, that's pretty much almost all diesels across the board. Um, so delete them, uh, which we do sell a kit for. Um, get that out of the way. Um, sorry, I got like, m and stuck in my cheek. Um, problem two, bottom end issues. That's a big one. Uh, that is a factory issue that hasn't been fully pinpointed to the exact cause, um, but we have been finding motors with high mileage that haven't been um, destroyed and taking them apart to rebuild them before they go bad, and then looking at the wear on the good parts and trying to basically reverse engineer and determine the cause of what is failing in these motors. Um, and we took apart a truck with, I think it was 343,000 miles recently, and it actually had um, signs of engine lugging on the bearings, uh, which was uh, basically associated to uh, extremely low RPM driving, which was significantly common when the EcoDiesel came out, is you'd be able to do 45 miles an hour in eighth gear, um, and then when you go to speed up a little bit, you'd hit the gas pedal, and the engine would lug, and it would downshift properly. Um, basically, to tell if an engine's lugging is you basically look at the bearings, and all the main bearings, the top bearings will be significantly more top of the bottom, I don't remember offhand, but either the top or the bottom will be significantly more worn than the other ones, leaving the other ones looking almost brand new. Uh, which could also be a product of a viscosity issue, uh, the oil physically not holding the crank up above the bearing and the bearings wearing into the bottom half. Uh, there's a lot of things that go on uh, in these motors that can lead to failure. So. Uh, one of the biggest things I can say, use a quality engine oil, get your engine oil tested by, I believe it's Blackstone, I believe, laboratories, um, and they can tell you if there's too much bearing material inside your oil, which will tell you to rebuild the engine before it goes bad. Now, obviously an engine rebuild can be expensive, uh, we do those as well, but it's, uh, I think, almost half the price to bring it in and have it rebuilt while it's still a good running engine. So, one of the biggest tips and tricks I can give you as well is take off the lower oil pan and make sure the oil pickup tube is clean. One of the biggest problems that we find on a lot of trucks, especially ones that haven't been maintained properly, is they get oil sludge buildup in the oil pan that sucks up into the oil pickup tube and actually restricts oil to the motor, which can lead to engine failure. Uh, a friend of mine has a shop, he's done his twice in a year. Uh, basically, he got a low oil warning, took off the oil pan, found it was clogged, fixed it, it was fine from there. A couple months later, same thing, low oil warning. Took off the oil pan, clogged up again. Um, back originally, when they started having issues, uh, basically on the forums and stuff, people said that that's what was causing the bottom end issues, was sludge in the oil, blocking galleries, or oil galleys, galleries, whatever, and um, that's partially true, but not completely true. The thing is, is we've pulled apart tons of motors that are failed, that are sparkling on the inside. They are immaculate. They look gorgeous, and they still failed. My big
biggest thing I can tell you. Get proper tuning that makes the engine downshift when it should. Use quality oil. Make sure the emissions are removed. Uh, and get a rebuild while it's still a healthy engine. Because when you rebuild it, we can put some quality king bearings in it. Put quality parts in it. One of the biggest things that they have from Mopar that is an issue is when they replace the engine bearing, or when they put engine bearings in it, the motor, let's say the motor, uh, the bearing clearance measures A, okay? And they have a chart. In order to reach A, use one blue bearing and one red bearing. So they take one bearing that's stamped blue, one bearing that's stamped red, they put them on, and that beats spec. The problem is you have one thick bearing and one thin bearing. Not a really good idea, but it's something they've been doing since like the 80s. Uh, Honda is prone to doing this as well. Uh, when we're done rebuilding the motors, the spec for the oil clearance is perfect all the way around, using a standard size king bearing that is perfect all the way through. Uh, the rotating assemblies get balanced properly. Um, nice, smooth running engine. Um, but, uh, joint deleted eco diesels. Ram 1500 eco diesel. Eco diesel performance USA. Um, eco diesel USA page. Uh, my website, www.ecodieselusa.com. Uh, follow us on YouTube. There's a ton of things that you can do to help prolong the life of these engines. And I basically hit the nail with all these things that I've listed as the number one things to do. Um, if you have questions, you can post it on this video in the comment section and we can address the questions in more videos, more videos going deeper into specific items. Um, Eco Diesel, the search Eco Diesel is one of the number one searches that my YouTube triggers uh, in which is my videos. Uh, so it is a common thing people are looking for. And if you are someone that's a new owner, you're probably scared after reading some stuff on the internet. But like I said, stay away from specific groups. Get away from forums. Stay away from people that do not work on them for a living. There are people that tune these. They don't work on cars. There are people that spout information about these, about the oil and things like that. They also don't work on cars, let alone eco diesels. All we do is work on diesels. And our main specific diesel we work on is the eco diesel. I sell more tuning for eco diesel than I do for any other vehicle. And I sell tuning for almost all diesels. It is what I specialize in. It is, I think there's six eco diesel Rams and four eco diesel Jeeps at my shop right now at this exact moment. Um, and then there's two more eco diesel Rams out back that I own and an EcoDiesel Jeep that I also own. I also have um, Wagger Rods and a few other things for EcoDiesel Performance Engine that we're gonna be building for one of our personal vehicles to show what kind of power we can actually throw at these things. So don't get in a hurry to sell your vehicle. Just be smart about what you do with your money and how you take care of your vehicle and the EcoDiesel can last a long time. I have one customer in Green Bay He's got over 300,000 miles on his Jeep. It's a stock motor, beats the piss out of it. I have a Ram that we just rebuilt the motor with a, with a blown head gasket in it, the original motor, over 340,000 miles on it. I got another customer with a Ram in Illinois that I think is now 280 or 290,000 miles. It is a work truck, beats the piss out of it. Speaking of beating the piss out of it, the Ram that's at my shop that we rebuilt the motor and with 340 some thousand miles on it has a gooseneck in the bed. He literally pulls gooseneck trailers with this truck. It's an absolute work truck and it gets used. So, don't be scared of the Eco Diesel. Be scared, if you're gonna be scared of anything, be scared of where you get your information from and just be smart about how you spend your money and what you do with the vehicle going forward. Um, there is a lot of things that we can do to make these last longer, tow better, drive better, faster, better economy, whatever. If you have your questions, post them in the comment section. We'll make more specific videos addressing that specific thing.